Venga, hombre. Don Menendez, thank you for taking time to sit down and speak with us. Bienvenido, bienvenido. Please, sit down. Uh, do not be worried, I'm only putting it away. <laughs> How may I help you? Well, Don Menendez, thank you for taking the time to answer a few questions. It's my pleasure. Welcome. Your career. Bienvenido. Bienvenido. When, were, when and where were you born? I was born in Aviles, which is a town in Asturias, in the north coast. A beautiful, brilliantly uh, located north coast of, of the peninsula of Spain. I was born in Aviles, and uh, I was not aristocratic, nor was my father. My father was a small merchant, as you say. You would say something similar to maybe middle class in your day. Uh, but we did have a home. Later, I expanded that home when I became a more, much more successful merchant and soldier. Who were your parents? Well, I, I finished selling to you. My father. My father was a merchant. His, his, his name was Menendez. And they were from Aviles. They were from Aviles. Good stock, Asturian, which is a Celtic people no? in uh, northern Spain. And so was my mother. And so is my wife, Maria. As a teenager, you left home. Why did you leave, and what did you do when you left? Well, I was 14 years old, and uh, my father had died. Uh, I, was, I had six other children, uh, brothers and sisters, to, to take care of. My father had been long since dead. And so it was the way to make money. Of course, this was the time when the empire was inflating, and merchants were necessary, and commerce was a way to make a, a, a money very quickly, to make a much more than a living, could become rich. In fact, it did. My town did very well, Aviles, because it was in the coast. It was a lot of corruption and graft, but there was also upward mobility, I believe you say. Um, and so my mother put me on board as an apprentice to a ship, and the ship was called the Santa Maria. And at 14, I learned how to defend myself with esgrima, or you say fencing. And uh, I had to, f to learn, every Spanish ship had to learn the art of war to defend itself from the encroaching pirates from all over the world that were uh, preying on Spanish trade at this time. I was born in 1513, 1514. So as a, as a young man, after you left home and you grew into adulthood, did you ever participate in any of the European wars? And if you did, mm. uh, what, was, what rank did you hold and what kind of a unit? I was, I was a, a captain by the age of 22. Um, uh, it, but it was my, uh, it was my uh, record, we could say, and it was recorded. Um, I was involved in irregular wars against the French, Dutch, Danish, English pirates that would prey on the actual ships. They would come in, they would prey on whole towns and ports of Spain herself. And so the most famous uh, French pirate in the day that would, that would attack all of the ships on the Bay of Bisc uh, Biscay uh, attacked from La Rochelle and took six ships that were moored in Aviles. And so I realized that something must be done. And so I waited three days, just when they felt that they were safe at home in harbor. And I, uh, in the middle of the night, I sailed with four Bergantinos. These are very small class ships. But we had the night acting as our friends, and we had speed. And so we attacked La Rochelle. We boarded the ships. We kicked out the French that were guarding the ships. We killed some. We did not attack the town, but we took our ships back. And that was when the ears of the new king, King Philip II, whose father, Charles III, had died, by 1520s, 1524, began to hear of Pedro Menendez. And it served me well. It catapulted my career to a, perhaps national renown. I also would like to say that it was this adventure that made me a close 
ally of the new king of the new of, of the new king surrounded himself with new men, younger men, that wanted to expand very ambitiously Spain. And when King Philip was uh, going to marry uh, uh, to the English queen, mm, I accompanied Philip, Felipe. I was his hand, hand uh, his, his gentleman's gentleman, no? I took his ships from, um, from Cardiff, we went to, to London, and I was in charge of all his retinue. And I, this is where I learned English. We were there for a number of months. Uh, it's, it's very interesting to find out how this country lives. They are very ambitious, like Spain is, but they have an entirely different perspective than we do. I suspect that these two cultures will someday clash. So in your career, Don Menendez, were you ever in any sort of trouble with any of the governmental departments or yeah. ever It's hard jailed? not to be. Yes, yes. I'm sure you've heard of this, no? Why would you ask? Oh. No, what happened is I was lucky, of course, because the king knows me and knows I am incapable of doing wrong by him. For I owe him my career. And I love my people. But when I became Admiral of the Ocean, and in land, this title turns into Capitan General, but on the ocean, it is Admiral of the Ocean, Almirante del, 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 del Mar. Um, when we were returning in 1563 from a large calm boy, I was accused by the merchants in and, and the, 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 the exchange houses in Sevilla and in Cadiz, basically in Cadiz that I was absconding with some uh, of the supplies of the silver ingots, silver in this case, uh, that I was taking off with the, with the king's tithe. This is impossible. The king is my friend. I would never have done this. There was a problem in the way that I, it was a bureaucratic uh, problem in the way the forms were signed and delivered. They were not delivered, the copies. I kept a copy that was supposed to be delivered uh, in, in, in La Habana, copies sent to uh, got it. Th those copies and got it never arrived. I had them in my possessions, and they thought that with this I was going to hide some of the convoy that had to be given with this, um, this receipt. I had the receipt in my papers. I simply did not know. But how to, how to prove I did not know? How to prove that I did not act with malicious intent? This is a big problem, and this takes a long time. This takes character witnesses going back years and years writing testimonies. Uh, this takes a, a judge trying to countermand the accusations being leveled against me. The king himself had trouble taking me out of prison. I was in prison 16 months. I escaped. I escaped. I had to. But I escaped where? To Valladolid, to see the king. And when he, when he saw me there, he, he's like, what are you doing here? I said, I escaped and I come begging you to interpose in my stead, in my... And he did, but uh, it took my escaping. Otherwise, I would I would probably still be rotting in, in a in a prison in Seville. But many many Spanish have been in prison, including the great Cervantes. So I have good company. <laughs> in the 1560s, your son Juan mm. came to the New World. 1563. Yes. What happened to him? This was the convoy behind mine. He was to arrive months after I did. I was imprisoned. And this is where I hear of my, my son, which was another reason why I wanted to escape. I wanted to get back to the to Las Indias to find him. And uh, he was a captain of one of the convoy ships, a fragata, middle-sized ship. Uh, and last the convoy saw him, he had struck a reef somewhere in the Bahamas Channel, specifically Cabo Cañaveral. And they thought they saw, they think they saw some uh, um, skiffs or barcolongos being rowed to the Florida shore, miles off the Florida shore. But conceivably, he could have survived. Many have. And it was told to me uh, by a number of witnesses that they, in fact, saw this. This is the 
I believe you say in your day, deal breaker, <laughs> to accept the adelantadismo of the king, who wanted, of course, to have me uh, create and solidify a colony in La Florida to secure the convoys. But I really accepted because I needed to be there to see if I can find my son. I have every hope that he is somewhere, uh, perhaps a well-fed slave of some of the Indians, maybe in, Apala in Apalachi or, or, or Tocobaga, somewhere. It's a big land. I must find him. So this is my hope, in fact, that I will. Wherever I go, I send messengers. I have artist renditions of what he may look like, and I show the Indians. We have a good dictionary, good lexicon to explain what son and lost is. So it is my hope that I will eventually find him. So that was one of the reasons for you to come to La Florida is to hunt for your son. It was one of the main reasons, yes. And there, were there any other reasons? Well, of course, the king demanded. Well, I did not have to, of course. But I saw, so I saw opportunity. Hmm? And uh, to make uh, money fast. Of course, we do not know. The problem is, of course, <laughs> that the king owns this new land. I am the administrator. I am the king's man, the extension of the king in this new land. So. I have rights to an encomienda, which is a collective farm, that everything collected on the collective farm is to profit me. But if they find precious metals, it is the king's. I own the surface of the land, but that which is underneath the land is the king. This is how the, this is how the riches and the precious metals arrive undisturbed. To, uh, to the king's coffers, to the, to, the, uh, to the national budget of Spain. This is the legal precedent that allows this to happen. So, coming to La Florida. La Florida. La Florida. Excuse, <laughs> excuse me. me. Um, you are English. I give you an excuse. Thank you. The French were here. Ah, yes. They, they yes. intruded upon Spanish territory. Yes, they had, no, they had no right to be here. No right. No. So how did you deal with that? Well, this is, um, of course, my king found that René de Lodénière had arrived with over 80, some say as much as 200 Huguenots. These were French heretics that the French king did not want in France. I suspect that in France there will be a big religious war soon between the, the, the Protestants and the Catholics. But um, in this day, they are sometimes the Protestants have more uh, influence. Sometimes the the Holy the Church regains this the power and has the king's ear. The king is very tolerant of these heretics, not not like my king. And so, but one way to get uh, to deal with this situation is to get rid of them. And what better way to use hmm, this this very uh, hungry workforce that is expelled from France, but to allow them, give them a land grant. In our land, of course, this is impossible. We cannot allow heretics in the New World, let alone Frenchmen. If they were Catholic, our brothers, we would still have to kick them out. But the fact that they were heretics, this gives us permission of the Vatican and the Holy See. This is important in my day. <clears throat> and so part of my charter, of which I have a copy here somewhere, tells me that I must expel all uh, 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 foreign nationals, hmm? by that, of course, the French, from, uh, from La Florida. And La Florida, of course, in my day, begins with the Islas de los Martires, or you would say the Keys, up to today what you call Nova Scotia. This is La Florida. So we, it was that, and of course, they pick a point right next to the Gulf Stream where, where it is super, super, well, they can attack us and, uh, at, at their whimsy whenever they want to. And they have been attacking us for 60 years. They have attacked La Habana, they have attacked Panama, they have attacked Spain herself, Hispaniola, the French are attacking us mercil mercilessly. Why would they act any different outside uh, uh, Charles Fort, right next to where that Gulf Stream turns, the most dangerous part of the Gulf Stream? Of course they would. We have to put a stop to it. So what did you do? When I arrived, it's a long story. Of course, the world knows this. Uh, we attacked their Charles Ford. Uh, we attacked them, attacked them because we understood that they, it was poorly manned. They had tried to attack us, but were cast away as they had struck 
uh, reefs, and we did not know where they were, so we took the initiative. We decided to take Charles Fort uh, in, by September 19, 1565, after four days of slogging through the Florida landscape under a terrible storm, which was a blessing because it was the same storm that pushed the French uh, ships away from San Agustin, mind you. So we attacked Charles Fort, we, 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 we pardoned, the, of course, the women and children, and we killed over 40 of the defenders there. It was poorly manned. We called it San Mateo, and I left command of Villarroel there as commanding general. And I marched back to San Agustin, where we heard from the Timucua, uh, who were already acting like our allies, that there were white men coming towards San Agustin. We realized this was Jean Ribot. They came in two uh, parcels, uh, each one 200 men or so. We had them destroyed. We had them destroyed. We gave them a choice. We gave, we asked, are you Protestant or Catholic? Who's a Protestant? Who's a Catholic? Most of them stood by their faith and died by their faith. And I was happily dis dispatching them. Some of them decided that they were Catholic after all. I call these optimists. But, of course, we have to accept them. And 16, 16 of them I pardoned because they were musicians and I liked music. Did you suffer any casualties? Uh, there were minimal losses, minimal losses. Yes. No, the, no, none of my kin, and of course, it's very interesting, my force was made up of Asturianos, basically, mostly. No? There were a couple of Basques that came with us, of course, but most of these were people who grew up together, so we really took care of each other, and I think this is the reason why we didn't have a lot of casualties. So can you uh, briefly explain the, the founding of San Augustine? Well, San Augustine is founded. In, in, first of all, it's called San Agustin because Flo La Florida was first sighted by my ships in August 29th, the feast day of the, uh, San Agustin. We wanted to pay homage to uh, that saint who had blessed our way. We saw a comet going north by northwest as, uh, through the Bahamas Channel. And we decided to follow that course. It was the shortest way to reach La Florida, and so it worked. It, it, it worked for us. I believe the saint interposed. Uh, intervened in our, in our favor for us. And so by September 8th, eh, Padre Garajales, who was our chaplain, decided to give a Thanksgiving at, uh, a, a, a mass. We sang Tadeums and we, sh we opened the ship stores, which we did not have much. We had for maybe a month, but we had to forage afterwards to find our food. But we decided it was right to share this uh, ship store with the Timucua Indians who were there and welcomed us and joined us in praise of God and the Holy Apostolic Catholic Church. And so we gave thanks to God. We had a, a meal together. And some say it was the first religious ritual right in your country with a shared meal. It is perhaps, well, no, it is definitely the first Thanksgiving. We were happy to be alive. We had come across. And we thank God for this. So you had good relations with the, the native? They became our fast brothers, the Timucos. Timucos especially, yes. Because the French were playing uh, favorites. Hmm? They had became become embroiled in the Indian um, politics. There were the, the, the Appalachians were at war with the, the Mukwas who were at war with the Ais. This, were, this was not a confederation. They were competing for the peninsula. Huh? So the French decided that the quickest way to make uh, friends was to make enemies of other huh? and become aligned with what they thought was the strongest uh, uh, tribe, which was the Appalachia at this time. This, we would not do this. We would not become embroiled in petty wars. No. We wanted to create the king's justice and we wanted them to convert with the help of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. We wanted to create a working society. We would not become embroiled in, in any type of hinterland war. No, it was not practical. So can you tell us, to, to kind of wrap up the interview, uh, when you returned to Spain, and maybe a little bit about your wife, and then how you ended your career? You know, such a magnificent career. How did you end no, it? I'm still in it. It's, you know, I still hopefully, yeah. It was, um, but it, when you study my life, you will find 
that I spent I, I, more than six trips to and from La Florida. And every time I come back to Aviles, I try to persuade my wife Maria to move with, uh, <laughs> with her, her. Her brother was the chronicler, Solis de Mera, was, it was the chronicler of, of my expedition. Um, my daughter, uh, um, Maria, uh, was going to become a nun, was taking her religious orders. She could not go. Uh, Anna was becoming married and was going to have children, and she wanted to stay in Aviles. I was trying to see if she and her family, Maria, would like to come with us no? to the New World. Not so. And Catalina, 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 who is of age, but very difficult, and it is harder to deal with the Indians in La Florida, the aboriginales, than to deal with Catalina. She is too much like her father, I fear. <laughs> no one can control Catalina. <laughs> she would be useful in La Florida, but she will not go out. Um, the king will use me, Felipe, his majesty, will use me uh, to help and aid in certain tiny adventures, the last one being his attempt to invade England from Santander in 1574. And if you read on my life, you will learn that this is where I contacted uh, probably malaria and died there. But I died in service of my king and a, a member of my uh, church and in, in my eyes uh, in God's good stead. I, I always work for my people, for my king and for my God. This is what you did in my time. Don Menendez, uh, I want to thank you very much for taking the time <laughs> Venga, and, uh, to answer a few questions. It was my question. Bienvenido. Bienvenido a casa. Venga, hombre. Mucho gusto, eh? Venga. <laughs>